list of things that you want to ask the doctor to make sure that you get through it and you can kind of keep on track. It's a, a handy the, tip. The thing as well about going to see your GP is you need to, um, I think making a list is a really good yeah. um, suggestion actually because sometimes, especially when it's a sensitive issue, you get in there yeah. and you get flustered. And they, um, they hurry you up as well absolutely. to get you in there as and I as think possible. as well if you're not happy with yeah. what you've heard or you're not happy with yeah. you know the way that the, the, the consultation went I'd definitely go and get a second or Absolutely. third opinion. Yeah. I actually heard a really upsetting story from um, a, a sister who went to a doctor and said, uh, you know, it's not in my family. I know I don't kind of fit the mould for um, having this, this uh, polycystic ovary syndrome, but I would like to be checked for it. I have excess hair growth and one or two other symptoms. Um, and he actually said to her, um, you know, don't be so vain, you know, uh, about this excess hair growth thing. It's, you know, it's just a vanity issue. So, um, you know, you don't, you don't fit the mould, so you don't have it so you know you need to kind of just deal with your vanity oh, um, she went fortunately she went and got a second opinion and was you know referred for the relevant tests and yeah. she was diagnosed with yeah. it and was able to then go on and get get the help but uh, you know had it been a different person that maybe wasn't so strong they, yes, they might exactly. not have gone back and got that, a second um, opinion we hear stories like that all the time unfortunately too often where women are yeah. and not getting the help or um, that they need or want from their doctor however I'd like to kind of counter that by saying there are so many good doctors now yeah. and you can be proactive and you can actually they're there to, to help you so if you don't yeah. like the yeah. help you're getting go and see another one Absolutely. and I'd really really urge people to be proactive um, and pushy about their own health that is really treatment. really important I mean we talked about getting treatment what kind of treatments are available for this condition um, there's lots of different treatments for symptoms so unfortunately there's not a whole a treatment for the whole condition because it does present so differently so it is treating it on a symptom by symptom basis so for example with excess hair it's hair removal and there might be long or short-term methods for, for dealing with that for weight it's obviously a a healthy diet and lifestyle changes to make to help that. Um, acne, there's um, things like the oral contraceptive pill or other treatments that they can seek help from their GP, but it is a symptom by symptom, unfortunately. And there's nothing that you're going to do that's going to aggravate the condition by dealing with these symptoms, is there? There's nothing you've got to be careful of or, you know, in terms of hair removal or acne treatments that's going to actually aggravate the... Well, I think you need a lot of women that get diagnosed with PCOS um, get diagnosed when they're trying for a baby. Right. So there might be medications that may help different symptoms that are not safe to have when trying. Um, so that's definitely a conversation that they need to be open um, with their doctor about having. Yeah. Um, but I would say that um, the the, the worst part of that is not treating anything because yeah. there is really serious long-term health risks um, that you're at jeopardy to get, of getting if you've got PCOS like heart disease and mm -hmm. endometrial cancer and type 2 diabetes these are really really serious yeah. mm -hmm. um, life-changing conditions that you can develop as a result so not Absolutely. getting treatment is worse than so definitely yeah. go out there and be proactive yeah. I think that's the main kind of thing to take away from this that whole idea of seeking the information that is out there and that's freely available you know yeah. getting support from people that you meet whether that's kind of you know uh, via these uh, networks or, or, or conferences mm -hmm. or what have you and I, I think just speaking to individuals yeah. that can really help help your own journey into seeking treatment as well. I mean, uh, we were talking about this and we're talking a lot about the kind of conditions that women are going through and the kind mm. of things that they're, they're experiencing as they go through this. What kind of advice could we give to any sisters out there that are, are going through this condition? Uh, Sister Nazia. Um, I think the first thing, I think you could apply this to any illness really. Mm. You have to have a positive outlook. Um, you can't, you know, you know, specific to this, one of the uh, things that can happen with someone who's um, uh, suffering from this condition is the fact that they might not be able to conceive uh, and they may be having you know fertility issues so if I were just to take that as an example you have to have that positive outlook in the sense that you can't um, you know this is a test we understand that Allah SWT has created us we're going to experience tests and health is one of the ways by which it's going to happen um, it could happen um, I've got the hadith of the Prophet it's, um, as narrated by Abu Saad no fatigue or disease no anxiety no sadness no hurt no distress befalls a Muslim even if it were a prick he receives from it a thorn but that Allah expiates some of his sins for that so it shows right. you immediately the whole kind of look even in the most difficult of circumstances there is a lot of good there for you if you deal with it in in a way that is going to be more proactive for you and actually medically we know that you know in terms of illnesses if we look at it from that kind of way we have more chances of dealing with it than to 
go the other way, which is to then end up in depression. I mean, if you look at the stories, you know, there's so many stories of how something that you might find, which is, you know, something like this condition, it is so difficult for some people. They might see that there's no end to it for them. You know, they might not see anything positive. But then look at the example in, in the Quran. You have the story of Ibrahim Islam, and his wife, Sarah. And you have also Zachariah and his, um, his wife, is Ispa. They could not have children. You know, we know that the stories, how they began, that they weren't able to have children. In the Quran, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, and Zachariah, when he cried to his Lord, oh my Lord, leave me without, um, do not leave me, leave me not without offspring, though thou art the best of inheritors. So we listened to him and we granted him Yahya. We cured his wife's barrenness for him. So it just shows you that nothing is impossible for him. So as, as Muslims, it's really important that we have that reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We make a lot of dua. You know, we, 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 we do not despair of his mercy, but rather we constantly hope for the best. And we're constantly hopeful that through the treatments, through whatever, you know, outlet that we go to, whether the groups that we go into, we get the help that we but it need. is important that we do seek those treatments. Of yeah. course, we should place that trust and reliance upon Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. But we do have to go out there and seek the means yeah, as well. You, you know, there's to, kind yeah. of two elements and two parts to that as well. I mean, Silas, some great advice there from Sister Nazia. Anything you'd like to add to that, Inshallah? I, I think it's a difficult one actually because it's quite a personal thing, isn't yeah. it? You know, I think each individual that's going through um, a test is going to kind of want different advice and different support mm. um, to be able to deal with that. But I think it's definitely a good idea to kind of look into our religion and look at the examples mm -hmm. of, uh, you know people from the past that have suffered uh, afflictions and how have they dealt with it. Um, you know, what I really like is the, the um, you know, the, the story of the life of uh, Prophet Ayub Ali um, mm. And, you know, how, how he, um, he, you know, he had much wealth, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of really good things in his life, um, land, animals, um, you know, a wife, many children, um, and all those favours were actually taken away from him and he was also physically um, uh, afflicted as well. Um, and how did he deal with this? You know, he, he, he bore this with patience. He bore this test with a huge amount of patience. Um, and, it, you know, he even said he'd suffered for seven years and he even said that he was hesitant to ask Allah to remove his difficulty. He said, I am ashamed to call upon my Lord to remove the hardship, for I have not suffered longer than the years of good health and plenty. Yeah. So, you know, we, we kind of see how he really looked at, uh, you know, the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had bestowed upon him before he looked at the tests that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had bestowed upon him. And actually, this is something, you know, again, I know we've said it time and time again in the show, but to be tested is something that we should expect. It's something very normal. It's something, uh, you know, exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises us. Um, in fact, in uh, Surah Anbiya, in the Quran, in verses 83 to 84, verily distress has seized me. Uh, sorry, I'm giving you the wrong quote there. <clears throat> in Surah um, Ankabut, verse 2 to 3, do people think that they will be left alone because they say we believe and will not be tested? We will indeed test those who were before them, and Allah will certainly make known the truth of those who are true, and will certainly make known the falsehood of those who are alliance so this is the thing you know we say we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we believe in his decree but actually when we're tested this is when we're the most vulnerable and Absolutely. we have to remember that this is the time when we need to uh, invest in that trust I the most. I think it's really, really important. And there's lots of advice out there. And often people say, you know, just be patient and just kind of um, just work through this and, yeah. and you'll get to the end. But for, for women who are going through this, that kind of advice can actually be a little bit, you know, it can be a bit patronizing at times. You can feel like, hang on, well, I'm going through this, you're yeah. not. So yeah. it's easy for you to say, be patient. I mean, Rachel, what's your experiences from working with the women? Um, what kind of advice would you give to any woman out there who's, who's suffering with this condition? Um, firstly, don't be embarrassed um, to talk to people, your doctor, your family, your partner. Um, it's nothing to be ashamed of. That, firstly, um, it, just remove that burden from yourself. Um, and next, be proactive about getting help. Read and learn as much as you can. I know I don't want to sound patronising either, but it does get easier to kind of wrap your head around it. It's a really daunting condition to be Absolutely. diagnosed with, but the longer you go through it and the more you learn, um, the easier it does get to, to deal with. I think, I mean, family and friends definitely have a role to play in this as well. I mean, Sister Nazia, what are some of the advice we could give to family and friends in supporting the, the sister who's going through this? I think, you know, yeah, it goes back to the fact that people they need to educate themselves as well. Mm -hmm. And I think the fact of the matter is like some of the examples that you've given, we can see from these conditions that there, there's so many factors yeah. taking place. And it's clear that they're not in the control, that also, most of these are not in the control of that individual. So for you to be 
picking on them, saying Judgmental. things, yeah, being okay. taking that kind of attitude. And even like, you know, I was just thinking as an example that, you know, for women especially, you know, there seems to be a lot of pressures pressures there you know you spend half your life when they you know like in our communities they're constantly when are you getting married when are you getting married mm -hmm. once you fulfill that then the next question immediately so where are the kids when are the kids coming there's this constant constant expectation and i think people need to sort of back off here because all of these things are not in the control of that individual you know ultimately it's it's with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i think people you know with some conditions like this they already there's enough stress there mm. and there then needs to be that sensitivity there has to be definitely well, as well that comes from a place um, for people that are critical like that it, it also comes not from necessarily a bad place but from a place of ignorance or not knowing mm -hmm. so if if you can maybe do your part in educating them about the condition that you have mm -hmm. then that then in turn makes them a Definitely. little bit more sensitive to the next person that Absolutely. they come across and to you it is about also you know getting that information yeah. yourself yeah. and then being able to speak to people yeah. about it finally uh, sister Liz just very quickly what kind of advice would you give to family out there um, again you know just to kind of echo the sentiments of uh, you know the the kind of knowledge is power and and mm -hmm. if you know about the the um, you know the the, the syndrome or whatever the person's diagnosed with, then you're best placed to, uh, to help them with that. And also we must remember as a community that it is a duty upon us to, you know, to visit sick people, to give them support, um, and, you know, inshallah that will, um, that will ease their, their difficulties during Absolutely. this time. Absolutely, we all have a part to play in this, and definitely I've come away with a greater understanding of the syndrome, and I hope, you know, it's helped any sisters out there who are going through this. Definitely seek the support, and I think be proactive. I think that's one of the lessons I will take away. So yeah. really great dynamic discussion there. Thank you very much. Well, we know in Surah Baqarah, verse 155, Allah has said, and certainly we shall test you with something of fear, hunger, loss of wealth, lives and fruit, but give glad tidings to as sabirun or the patient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us that we will be tested with many things in this dunya and our health is one of them. We must approach any condition within which Allah has placed us in an Islamic con context. Be patient, but be proactive in how you deal with your condition because there is help and treatment available to help you manage it in the best way possible. Well, as always, a really interesting discussion there from the panel. But what do you think about this issue? We'd love to hear from you and your comments. You can email us womensam at islamchannel.tv or contact us on our Facebook page or tweet us at islamchannel, hashtag womensam. Well, we're off to another break now. Stay tuned. We'll be back with our last segment where we'll be discussing foods we can eat which are particularly beneficial for women. And hopefully you can pick up some tips and me as well. So stay tuned for that. We'll see you shortly. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.